Palestinian death toll rises to 1,537, according to Gaza's health ministry. IDF says ground offensive will launch when opportune and fit for our purposes. In case you missed this earlier, Israel's parliament approved Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's emergency unity government on Thursday, including a number of centrist opposition lawmakers to display its determination to fight the war with Hamas in Gaza. The government approved after Saturday's attack by the militant Islamist group Hamas that governs the Gaza Strip, underlines the suspension of normal political rules during one of the most serious crises in Israel's history. We are in a critical situation, Oshraf al kidra the spokesman for the Gaza Health Ministry, has told the Associated Press. Ambulances can't get to the wounded, the wounded can't get to intensive care, the dead can't get to the morgue. The morgue at Gaza's biggest hospital overflowed Thursday, as bodies came in faster than relatives could claim them. The Associated Press reports. The morgue at Gaza City's Shifa Hospital can only handle some 30 bodies at a time, and workers had to stack corpses three high outside the walk-in cooler and put dozens more side by side in the parking lot. Some were placed in a tent, and others were sprawled on the cement under the sun. The body bag started and just kept coming and coming and now it's a graveyard. Obu Elias Shoboki, a nurse at Shifal, told AP, referring to the parking lot. I'm emotionally, physically exhausted. I just have to stop myself from thinking about how much worse it will get. Lines of white body bags, soles of bare feet sticking out from one, a bloody arm from another, brought the scale and intensity of Israel's retaliation on Gaza into sharp relief. Hospital officials asked stricken family members to identify their loved ones. Some peered into the body bags, then collapsed into tears or screams. In case you missed this earlier, Israel and the White House on Thursday condemned remarks by Donald Trump in which he praised the Iran-backed militant group Hezbollah and criticized Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over the Hamas attack. Trump called the Lebanese Hezbollah a sworn enemy of Israel, very smart and accused Netanyahu of being not prepared for the Hamas attack, which also killed 22 Americans. Israeli Communications Minister Shlomo Kori said Trump's comments to supporters and in a television interview on Wednesday night showed he could not be relied on. It is shameful that a man like that, a former US president, abets propaganda and disseminates things that wound the spirit of Israel's fighters and its citizens, Corey told Israel's Channel 13. White House Deputy Press Secretary Andrew Bates called Trump's comments dangerous and unhinged. It's completely lost on us why any American would ever praise an Iran-backed terrorist organization as smart. Bates said. Democratic President Joe Biden has condemned the Hamas attack as an act of sheer evil and declared his unwavering support for Israel. AP has taken a look at whether Lebanon's Hezbollah is likely to join the war. Hezbollah, which like Hamas, is supported by Iran, has so far been on the fence about joining the fighting between Israel and the Gaza Strip's Islamic militant rulers. While Israel's political and military leaders weigh the next move, they are nervously watching Hezbollah on Israel's northern border and have sent troop reinforcements to the area. Hezbollah, with an arsenal of tens of thousands of rockets and missiles capable of hitting virtually anywhere in Israel is viewed as a far more formidable foe than Hamas. Israel is anxious that opening a new front in the country's north could change the tide of the war, with Hezbollah's military caliber far superior to that of Hamas. But the fighting could be equally devastating for Hezbollah and Lebanon. Israel is especially worried about Hezbollah's precision-guided missiles, which are believed to be aimed at strategic targets 
like natural gas rigs and power stations. Kasim Kasser, a Lebanese analyst close to the group, said Hezbollah will not allow Hamas destruction and won't leave Gaza alone to face a ground incursion. When the situation requires further escalation, then Hezbollah will do so, he told the Associated Press. But the possibility of a new front in Lebanon also brings back bitter memories of a vicious month-long war between Hezbollah and Israel in 2006 that ended in a stalemate and a tense detente between the two sides. Lebanon is in the fourth year of a crippling economic crisis and is bitterly divided between Hezbollah and its allies and opponents, paralyzing the political system. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak spoke to Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu on Thursday evening to reaffirm the country's support for Israel following Hamas attack. A Downing Street spokesperson said on Thursday. The leaders discussed Israel's response against Hamas in Gaza and Sanek confirmed the UK had authorized the sending of a significant support package to the region, including RAF surveillance aircraft, two Royal Navy ships, and three Merlin helicopters. This is Helen Sullivan taking over our live coverage of the Israel-Hamas war. It's 2 a.m. in Gaza City and Tel Aviv. Here's where we stand. Israel began the long and sorrowful process of burying the victims of the weekend's attacks by Hamas. The most recent death toll in Israel stands at 1. 200. Israel's military spokesperson said the government has been able to confirm the identities of 97 people taken hostage into Gaza during the attack by Hamas. More than 100 are believed to have been taken. More than 1,500 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli strikes since Saturday, Gaza's health ministry said on Thursday. Among them are 500 children and 276 women, it said. A further six. 612 were wounded in Israeli airstrikes on the Palestinian enclave, the ministry said. More than 338,000 people have been forced to flee their homes in the Gaza Strip, the UN said on Thursday. As heavy Israeli bombardments continue to hit the Palestinian enclave, the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah el Sisi, said Gazans must stay steadfast and remain on their land amid growing calls for Cairo to allow safe passage to civilians fleeing Gaza. The only viable exit for Gazans to flee is through the Rafah border crossing between Egypt and Gaza, but Egypt has rejected any move to set up safe corridors for refugees fleeing Gaza. The World Health Organization said it has documented 34 attacks on health care in Gaza since last Saturday that have resulted in the death of 11 health workers, 16 injuries, and damages to 19 health facilities and 20 ambulances. In a statement on Thursday, the WHO warned that the health system in the Gaza Strip is at breaking point and that time is running out to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. The UN's World Food Programme WFP said the situation in the Gaza Strip is dire and devastating and warned that crucial supplies were running dangerously low after Israel imposed a total blockade on the territory. Israel's energy minister, Israel Katz, said no power, water or fuel will be allowed into Gaza until Israeli hostages are returned home. Human Rights Watch said it had concluded Israel used white phosphorus in military operations over the Gaza city port and two rural locations along the Israel-Lebanon border this week. Israel's use of white phosphorus in crowded civilian areas poses a high risk of excruciating burns and lifelong suffering, the organization warned. A ground offensive will be launched on Gaza when opportune and fit for our purposes. The IDF spokesperson Jonathan Conricus said in an update early on Thursday. Israeli strikes have killed three journalists so far, and two others died as a result of gunshot wounds. According to reporters, without borders. 
Some 12 workers with the Union Palestinian Refugee Agency have been killed in Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza Strip, the organization has said. The Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, spoke to the King of Jordan, Abdullah II, on Thursday. Abbas stressed the rejection of killing civilians or abusing them on both sides and called for the release of civilians, prisoners and detainees. Two police officers were wounded after a shooting attack near the Herod's Gate entrance to the Jerusalem Old City, Israeli police said. The gunman used a makeshift submachine gun in the attack. According to police, officers returned fire and neutralized him, police said. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said the attacks by Hamas had hearing echoes of Nazi massacres. As he stood alongside the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, in Jerusalem, in an act of public solidarity. Blinken vowed that the US would stand forever alongside Israel, and said he would use his tour of the region to urge all parties, especially Hezbollah, not to broaden the conflict or open a second front. The death toll of US citizens in Israel now stands at 27. The White House said on Thursday, the number of Americans unaccounted for is 14. Iran's foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdelayan, warned that the continuation of war crimes against Palestine and Gaza could open a new front of war, and that Israel will be responsible for the consequences. Abdelayan arrived in the Lebanese capital Beirut on Thursday, where he was received by the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah and Hamas. Syria said Israeli forces launched simultaneous missile attacks on the airports in its capital Damascus and the northern city of Aleppo on Thursday. Bursts of missiles hit the two airports at the same time. A Syrian military source was cited as saying in what he said was a bit to distract the world's attention from Israel's war with Hamas militants in Gaza. The UK will deploy patrol and surveillance aircraft and two Royal Navy ships to the eastern Mediterranean to support Israel. The government said. Maritime patrol and surveillance aircraft will begin flying in the region to track threats to regional stability, Downing Street said. The US and Qatar have agreed to deny Iran's access to any of the $6 billion for pounds. 9 billion funds that were part of a prisoner swap deal between the Biden administration and Tehran last month, the U.S. Deputy Treasury Secretary, Wally Adeyemo, reportedly told House Democrats. Emmanuel Macron said France is doing everything possible for the citizens missing in Israel in a televised address on Thursday evening. France will never abandon its children. The French president said. 13 French citizens were killed in Hamas attacks on Israel at the weekend. Another 17, including children, are reported missing. Several are believed to be being held hostage in Gaza. The British government is organizing flights to repatriate British nationals from Israel, with the first due to leave from Tel Aviv on Thursday. British nationals will be invited to take up seats on the flights along with dual nationals. Independence, if travelling with a British national, normally resident in the UK. The British children of elderly hostages, abducted by Hamas, pleaded for their return as they described the invasion of Israel as a second holocaust. 17 British nationals are feared dead or missing after the weekend's atrocities. Officials across Europe scrambled to curtail any spillover of tensions from the Israel-Hamas war. With Germany pledging a zero-tolerance approach to anti-Semitism and France banning pro-Palestinian protests amid concerns for public order. France's President, Emmanuel Macron, warned that anti-Semitic acts and defending terrorism would be dealt with severely in France in a televised address on the Israel-Palestine crisis on Thursday evening. 
Two Jewish schools in northwest London are set to close temporarily because of safety fears after the crisis in Israel and Gaza. As ministers announced £3 million for a charity that helps protect Jewish community sites. Iran's foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdelayan, warned that the continuation of war crimes against Palestine and Gaza could open a new front of war and that Israel will be responsible for the consequences. Speaking through a translator in televised remarks on Thursday, Abdelayan said. Some Western officials have questioned if there is an intention to open a new front against the Zionist entity. Of course, in light of the continuation of these circumstances that are war crimes. The Iranian minister said the displacement of Palestinians in cutting water and electricity to the Gaza Strip are considered war crimes. He added, The continuation of war crimes against Palestine and Gaza will receive a response from the rest of the Axis. And naturally, the Zionist entity and its supporters will be responsible for the consequences of that. Abdelayan arrived in the Lebanese capital Beirut on Thursday, where he was received by the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah and Hamas, among other pro-Ron groups. He is scheduled to meet Lebanese officials on Friday, before heading to Damascus. AFP reported. Hungary has evacuated a further 65 citizens from Israel, Foreign Minister Peter Sijato said. The evacuated Hungarian nations are en route by ship to Cyprus. From where they will be flown back to Hungary, he said in a statement. Earlier this week Hungary had evacuated 325 people, including 46 children, from Israel by air. Sijato said in an earlier statement on Thursday. We would like it if they could come home as soon as possible. Jordan's foreign minister, Ayman Safadi, said Israel's denial of entry of aid to Gaza was a breach of humanitarian values and principles and called for a lifting of the siege. Safadi, in comments on state media and quoted by Reuters, said ending the siege of the Palestinian enclave was the responsibility of the international community. Human Rights Watch said it had concluded Israel used white phosphorus in military operations in Lebanon and Gaza this week. In a statement, HRW said it had verified videos from Tuesday and Wednesday showing multiple airbursts of artillery-fired white phosphorus over the Gaza city port and two rural locations along the Israel-Lebanon border. The organization said it also interviewed two witnesses of the Gaza attack. Israel's use of white phosphorus in military operations in Gaza and Lebanon puts civilians at risk of serious and long-term injuries. It said, White phosphorus has a significant incendiary effect that can severely burn people, HRW warned. The use of white phosphorus in Gaza, one of the world's most densely populated areas, magnifies the risk to civilians and violates the international humanitarian law, it added. Loma Fuki, HRW's Middle East and North Africa director, said, Any time that white phosphorus is used in crowded civilian areas, it poses a high risk of excruciating burns and lifelong suffering.